Welcome back to the Christian Meditation Podcast, Episode 51. Put on the whole armor of God, a guided Christian meditation on Ephesians, Chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. So I work as a hospice chaplain. I've also worked as an ICU chaplain. And my purpose in making this podcast is to help you to find more peace in your life, to be more open to be changed by the Spirit of God. The meditation style I follow involves six steps. Relaxation, reading from the Bible, meditation, prayer, contemplation, and visualization. So if you enjoy this meditation, I invite you to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is that you found this podcast so you can get the most up-to-date episodes. You can also find links and other information at my website, christianmeditationpodcast.com. So get into a place where you can sit comfortably and uninterrupted for the next 20 minutes. If you feel comfortable to do so, I invite you to close your eyes now. In this moment, notice your breathing. During the course of this meditation, your breathing will slow and become more relaxed. With each passing breath, you get more and more relaxed. And the more often that you do this, the better you get at being relaxed. So as you sit back now, feel the air rushing into your body, calming you, comforting you, and helping you to relax. As you do this, you begin to feel protection from God. This moment is completely safe from anything else going on in your life. This moment is protected. Enjoy that feeling of protection coming from God. Knowing that He will defend you, He will fight your battles for you. Breathe in this feeling of peace and protection. Feel nice and calm as you continue to breathe deeper. Your body continues to relax more and more. With each passing breath, any remaining tension in your body escapes. And you're left with peaceful calm inside of your body. God has created in you the ability to calm and relax. Enjoy this feeling of calm as it begins to come slowly at first and then more and more rapidly. Allow that peace to reside in you and enjoy the feeling of safety that you have in the Lord. As you continue to breathe deeply and relax, your mind is more prepared and less distracted to receive the Word of God. Today we'll be reading from Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. The scripture may be known to you, but I want you to listen to it as though you've never heard it. I want you to let this message resonate in your mind. Search for elements that stick out to you. I'll first read from the King James Version. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What message stood out to you as you listened to the scripture? What does it mean? Now I'll read from the NIV version. Finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So notice the similarities and differences, and also notice if the message that you were hearing the first time was repeated. Now continue breathing deeply and allow this message to sink deep into your heart. Now I want to reflect on a few things. So when you picture the armor of God, what image comes to mind? I've seen many different artists' renditions of this. The ones that usually depict this armor either as a medieval plate mail or some version of Roman armor from the period of Paul who's writing this epistle. I enjoy these images, but somehow I find that they don't fully represent the difference of the armor of God. Later on in the same chapter, Paul lays out the elements of the armor of God. He says the loins gird or the belt of truth. Truth helps us so we don't have to worry about our pants falling down. The breastplate of righteousness, protecting the most vital elements of our body and our heart is righteousness, our fortitude and ability to do what's right. Feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So as we strive to follow the example of Jesus Christ, as we trust in him, as we place our faith in him, This provides a readiness to move. The shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the descriptions that Paul uses don't sound like preparation for war necessarily, but for defense and preparation. The only offensive element is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul states that we are against the powers of darkness. And for us to rage angrily against the darkness doesn't seem like a recipe for success and doesn't seem consistent with this scripture. If we trust in God's ways, we can much more successfully defend ourselves against the darkness that seeks to destroy us. If we try to throw on God's armor and then act as a vigilante, we will not succeed. And our concept of the armor of God is not what will save us. It's God's concept that will save us. The other day I came across some interesting information. I want to make it clear that this is not what Paul is talking about, but it adds an interesting metaphor to Paul's metaphor. 
gambeson was a type of armor used hundreds of years after Paul wrote this, but it helps change our mental paradigm. Gambeson is a type of armor basically that takes multiple layers of cloth and puts them together in such a way that it's a thick material that resists swords and sharp objects. It looks more like a big coat than it does an armor, and many times you may have seen this in medieval type artistry. However, in terms of its ability to protect the wearer, it's very effective. It's actually much more effective than butted chainmail. It looks more like a coat, but yet it's very useful. And I find that this is an interesting comparison to worldly armor versus God's armor. God's armor may not appear to be armor in the ways of the the world. And in the battles in our lives, it is God's protection that will come in forms that we do not expect that will save us and teach us. And God's protection is mainly intended to teach us and craft us to help us grow into what he has in mind for us. So throughout the rest of this meditation, I want you to consider what the armor of God looks like in your life. And try to get away from the simplistic descriptions of plate mail or just some kind of abstract thing. Look for specific examples. For now, please join me in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we lift our minds and our hearts and our voices to Thee in prayer. We ask guidance as we attempt to put on the whole armor that Paul describes here, Thy holy armor. May we be instructed and guided through Thy Holy Spirit to absorb this message into our lives in just the way that we need it. Guide us, everyone who's listening in me, that we can follow thy will and we can be protected from the forces and the powers of darkness. Inspire our minds and help us to find peace in this troubled world and help us to overcome those things in our lives which represent the forces of darkness. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I invite you to continue in prayer now. I'll give you a couple more seconds. At this time, we're going to sit in the silence of the Lord. Just sit in calm reflection, allowing this message to reach your heart. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Now we want to apply these messages. And so the way we do that is by visualizing the kind of change that will affect us directly. In what ways can you incorporate the idea, the thought, the feeling, or just a general message that you received from God through the scriptures and through this meditation today? Visualize that now.
I'll give you a couple more seconds. Now visualize how you can describe this experience in terms of words. Many times it's impressions that we have, but yet as we articulate them, it helps. So think if you were to journal about this or send a message to your friend or talk about this with somebody, how would you describe what you've learned here today? I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right, now I'm going to finish with a thought as well as a question. Before I do that, though, I want to say a couple things. As you may know, I release a new episode every Sunday morning at 1 a.m. time, mountain time in the United States, that is. I invite you to go to my website. You can reach out to me at christianmeditationpodcast.com. And to send me a message, it's just the same website, christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact and you can message me directly from the website and that comes to my personal account. So I want you to think about this question. What does the armor of God look like in your life and how can you continually put it on? What does the armor of God look like in your life and how can you continually put it on? So now I'm going to engage in the final thought here. Our whole lives, we think sometimes it's about overcoming, it's about living a certain way, it's about doing something specific. But for God, it's about bringing his children home. It's about helping us overcome and learn and grow. As I've looked at my children grow, I want nothing more for them than to learn exactly what they need to, to be productive as they grow up. And I anticipate that God has a similar goal for us. All of the things that we go through, even the challenges, and even the direct confrontation from these, as it describes here, the powers of darkness, all teach us how to rely on Him. If we can learn how to put on the armor of God, we will be more prepared and more strong to become all that he has in mind for us. It's not enough to be simple rule followers. It's not enough to sit back and assume that our faith will do everything. We, we are changed by our faith to act according to God's desires. So let us get up, put on the armor of God, and combat those powers of the darkness in this world and help each other out as Christians so that we can be there for each other. We can help each other all overcome this and that we can truly be the army of God as his children. Thank you for joining me today. If, again, if you have any comments you want to send me, feel free at christianmeditationpodcast.com forward slash contact I know that if we do this, God's power will teach us, inspire us, and protect us to learn all the most valuable lessons and become what He wants of us so that we can be cleansed through the blood of Christ. And this I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.